everyone to this uh, presentation called Performance, Do Graphics the Right Way? Anyway, uh, how many of you were at my presentation yesterday about the Qt Graph project? So enough the, that I have to introduce myself again. Or few enough that I have to introduce myself again. My name is Gunnar Slara. I'm, um, I've been employed with uh, Nokia, Qt, Trolltech for a little over eight years. In that time, I've been uh, doing several different projects. Uh, I started out with, um, with Qt scripting for applications, a JavaScript engine that did some bindings to Qt objects uh, that later evolved into a second generation Qt script thing that was later Qt script and Qt, but I, by that time I had long since left the project. I spent a couple of years doing uh, a Java port of Qt, Qt Jumbi, if you heard of that. But the thing that I spent the most time on and the thing that is closest to my heart and to my, my, my passion is graphics. And for the Qt 4.0 release, I was one of the key uh, people doing the, doing the graphics stack. So Qt Painter and Qt Paint Engine and all that stuff. And I was the initial author of the RAS to Paint Engine, for those of you who know that. But uh, sadly, um, much of the code in that engine has now been replaced. So. Yes. I would urge you to raise your hand if you have questions along the way. I don't mind being interrupted. So if you have any questions to what I say or if you want me to elaborate on a topic, uh, please just shout. If this turns into a discussion, that's, uh, that's just perfect. So let's start. Um, over Christmas, or just before Christmas last year, I was a little bit annoyed with the fact that there was, n there was really no knowledge of how to do good graphics in Qt and how to do it fast. So I started this blog series, I, so we wrote like eight or nine posts in total, uh, covering different aspects of the Qt graphics stack. How many have read this? Okay, take a note of that uh, thing. If you're interested in graphics in Qt, uh, you should read up on that stuff. And all the stuff I'm talking about here is stuff that I already covered back then. And this is also on the way into the documentation, by the way. There were also some couple of other contributors to that, to that thread, though. So, yeah, this is the, this is the link to the last of the, of the talks, but the, or the posts, but the, the last of the talk has a link back to the other ones. So, that's that. The thing I'm going to talk about, I split it into four different uh, pieces. First of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about the concept of graphics systems. It's a concept we introduced back in Qt 4.5, and I think it sort of it it forms a basis for, um, for for the rest of the talk. I'm going to talk a little bit about painting, and uh, most specifically, talk about two sort of rules that I tend to try to follow myself when I do graphics, and they're completely informal and rather silly, but um, but um, they tend to work for me at least. So I'm sharing them with you. Then I'm going to talk about text. Um, how many of you profile your apps? How often is text an issue? The same, the same people? No? Come on. How many have seen text as being a draw text? It's like top of the list. Quite a few. And so that's why text is there. Uh, and finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about threading. Not so much multi-threaded. And not that we're going to split Qt into like uh, and render one part of the part of our frame on each core, but more how threading can help you in the application to create a more fluid user experience. So that's that. So let's start with the graphic systems. It's really a basic concept, and um, the idea is that it should be possible for it was it should prior to like Qt 4.4 and earlier versions, the, the pix map and the, and the widget surface was decided at compile time. You compile Qt on X11 and you would get an X handle behind the pix map and you would get an X handle on the window surface. But the graphic system, uh, or we noticed that since we had this raster paint engine that sort of performed rather well, and it supported all the features that typically you would like and all the advanced features really well, people on X11 started to change their paint event to be create an image, open a painter on the image, draw into the image, and then at the end, open a painter on the widget and draw the image. Has anyone done this? 
quite a few people. We felt that this was kind of awkward. Um, and it would be better if, if you could just like open a painter on the widget directly, and this widget would be a raster-based widget. And then we could use like shared memory to actually upload the, the bits to the XOR really fast. So that was the basic idea of graphics system, to be, to be able to plug in and decide more at runtime what, what kind of pix maps do you have and what kind of window surface do you have. And how many use raster today on X11, for instance? All the time? Quite a few. The way to enable it is that there are three options. You can specify minus graphic system raster on the command line. You can specify the command, um, the command, the environment variable, cute graphic system. Or you can specify set graphic system colon colon raster in the, um, in the application. And there are there are, there, are, there are multiple graphic systems in Qt today. It's like the it's X11, Core Graphics, OpenGL, Raster, OpenVG. There was a direct X1. And there are, there are multiple. Uh, and th there are different levels of enthusiasm uh, inside my group uh, about these engines. And the ones that we are really enthusiastic about is the OpenGL paint engine and the Raster paint engine. Uh, OpenGL, because it's it's the kick-ass API for graphics. Um, there is really no... How many of you know OpenGL? Awesome! <laughs> there is no better, right? It's, it's really good. It sucks? Huh? <laughs> you can do so much with it. It's just cool. But... Um, it's the hardware accelerated engine that we that we tend to recommend for the main view of the application. And then we have raster, which we tend to recommend for the UI of the application. So if you have a toolbar and, uh, and some tree views and stuff, and then you have a main view with, uh, with maybe a maps or something, then like our typical recommendation is like OpenGL for the main view and raster around. The engines we are somewhat less enthusiastic about, uh, X11, Core Graphics, DirectX, Direct3D. And I don't know if you've seen in Qt Master, but we're switching X11 to be raster by default in 4.8. No reaction? No tears? Thumbs up, thumbs down? I see thumbs up. Okay, that's good. We're also trying to get to, to the point where we can switch core graphics to raster. Thumbs up, thumbs down. No one cares. Who's on Mac? <laughs> You're good with it? Yeah. We are fixing the text. We, I don't know if you saw, SQL wrote a blog post about sub-pixel positioning of text the other day. The gamma correction should be, should be within one, like one, one 256 pixel value ratio accurate. And so I, I think we're getting to a point where the text is really good. And the main reason for trying to switch is that um, performance is very consistent on raster. Um, and it's very predictable, and it tends to be rather good. And it also has a lot less bugs than the other ones. So that's the motivation for, for being less enthusiastic. And DirectX and Direct3D, uh, it's simply too window specific for us to invest too much time into. So, um, OpenGL, the paint engine has some strengths. Uh, it's accelerated, which means that like gradients and transformations, smooth pixmap transforms, all of this stuff we consider more or less cheap. Like, so, so like that's why it's good for the main view where you have where you have like you can have images scaling the image galleries with all their stuff, uh, zooming in and out of images, and all of these things are more or less cheap. That's what it's good at. Alpha blending, also good. Some of the weaknesses of this engine, it doesn't have high quality anti-aliasing. And, and so instead we just recommend using multi-sampling. The reason for that is primarily that we, in the old GL1.x paint engine, we had high quality anti-aliasing. 
So we tessellated, what we did, we took a polygon, we tessellated that into a bunch of, uh, a bunch of trapezoids and we ran a shader that would anti-alias the edges of those trapezoids. And this was uh, slower than the rest of intention. So, um, like, and the Rasta Paint Engine anyway has like 256 levels of anti-aliasing. It does really good anti-aliasing. So, we kind of weighed and yeah, we're, like NVIDIA cards have like pretty, pretty good multi-sampling by now. So, let's just stick with that. And and if you want if you want to guarantee quality, you can always use raster. The problematic part of it. Uh, for those who saw my talk yesterday, is that there is a setup cost for doing stuff on GL. Um, basically, because GL is built is primarily built to do games, and you, if you draw like a big mesh, uh, like an octopus with eight tentacles, then like it's you're setting up this pipeline to draw this shape, this this uh, this octopus, and yeah, uh, you're setting it up, and then you're telling it to draw like 50,000 vertices, and and let it do that, and it's done. You set it up to do some other stuff, and you give it lots of data, and that it gives sort of the the driver people. They don't really care about like if you're telling it to draw like two vertices or like a line. It doesn't really optimize for that use case, so that typically tends to be problematic. It costs a lot. Like um, on the N900, if you do, if you switch from text drawing to pixel map drawing. And then you draw the pix map. Just calling GL draw arrays takes like 120 microseconds. That's actually really a lot. That means you can do like less than 10 of those per millisecond. So that to if you want if you want to finish your frame beneath the 16 millisecond mark to get to like to have maximum frame rate, that means that you can do like 100, 160 of those calls. And that's not a lot. So for the small things, it's not really good. And it also doesn't gamma correct text. I don't know if you if you noticed if you used the clear type text on the OpenGL Paint Engine on the Mac, then you will notice that the text is slightly darker than the native one. Because to do gamma correction, we would have to read the background and then blend that with the foreground. And that requires a two-pass or a readback, and that's not really something we would like to do. And anyway, raster does it well anyway. So then raster, the other one. It's really, it really, like, it really come down, comes down to like horsepower divided by number of pixels. That is really like a constant, constant ratio there, right? So if if you have a good CPU, and most devices and and computers have a good CPU then you have fairly good throughput. It has this um, a state change in the raster paint engine is mostly just flipping a function pointer and pointing it at a different, uh, a different thing. So that's, um, that's very cheap, which means that like, toggling between like draw pix map, draw one uh, bit of text, draw one small line, draw fill rect is very cheap. So, and because the pixel throughput is like divided by number of pixels, it, mean, it means that you have high throughput if you have few pixels. So small fills, lots of state changes, the raster paint engine is really good. Then there are some optimizations that have been done to this engine. The way that it works is that it, when, you, when you tell it to draw a line uh, or a rectangle, it, will, it has this generic path where it, um, where it takes the line, runs an algorithm, produces these small blocks of spans that we call them. They have an X value, a Y value, and a length. So that's like this block of pixels needs to be filled in. And that goes into this uh, machinery of reading pixels from the, from, the, from, the, from, the, from the target buffer, putting it in, into, an, into a buffer, as figuring out what method to use to fill these, and then write them back again if it's blended and stuff. And this, this path, it works really well. Um, but it's a little bit slow. So we have optimizations for specific formats, for specific paths. So if you're drawing a PIX map, then there is a specialized path that will, for these formats, RGB 16, RGB 32, and RGB, ARGB 32 pre-multiplied, 
there, is, there are special paths that optimize and just do a for loop over the pixels and just do the raw thing with, the, with like hardcore neon assembly. And the thing is that we focus specifically on certain formats. So if you're missing out on, if you're using like ARGB32 non pre multiplied, you're potentially hitting an algorithm that is 10 to 50 times slower than ARGB32 pre multiplied. So it's not just because the pre multiplication uh, makes a difference, but also because you're not hitting the optimal path inside the engine. And this is really critical. There are no other formats for graphics than those three. Uh, pixel aligned rectangles are almost for free if you're using those formats. <clears throat> and same with pixel transformations, since scaling, since 4.5, and rotation and sharing, since 4.6 is also pretty cheap. It's like two times slower than, than normal drawing only. How many of you are still on 4.4? One guy in the back. <laughs> we have this project uh, internally which we called Falcon, which was, uh, which was this initiative to make you fly. It was really pitchy. But um, we, we, like, we totally redid the raster paint engine uh, during that project. And like the, the, for every release since 4.6, we've like doubled performance in key areas. So it's really, it's really important to be on the latest uh, versions of, version of Qt. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on really, really critical performance things. It does have some weaknesses. Um, any other image format, you can consider that they do not exist. It's like they are not even there. Uh, never ever use them. And that includes ARGB32. And then comes the little quirk, which is that if you load a PNG from disk and you open a painter on it, it will be ARGB32. If you're, then like in many, many external tools that you're re interfacing with also give or supply or take ARGB32. I would often think that it's actually faster to do, if, the, if you're doing a lot of drawing, do it in ARGB32 and convert the thing yourself afterwards using some, some SIMD instructions, and that's probably better. Anti-aliasing um, makes things a little bit slower. Smooth <laughs> pix map transformations, spelling error. Um, they are not optimized at the moment, so they hit the, the, the default fallback path. Complex clipping kills all optimizations. So like if you stick to rectangles for clipping, you're good. If you use a rotated rectangle for clipping, you're screwed. Um, and finally, dashed thick lines. How many have, see, have run into that problem? Not that many. That's actually good. I'm happy. Um, the issue is that the way that the, the stroker and the scan converter works, uh, yeah, it, it just, it's, it's, it's something that we, we accept that like this is not the most critical feature for us. If you use a cosmetic one pixel wide um, pen, then, uh, then, then dashing is, is as fast as normal uh, line drawing. But for, um, yeah, but for the for a thicker pen with anti-aliasing, it will be slow. So you might want to consider either switching to GL for that particular use case or to simply not do it. So I mean, so back to the recommendation. So raster is good for the small stuff and has the high quality, um, while OpenGL is more like the sledgehammer that can that can that can pull through lots and lots of stuff. And that's led us to this, to this um, conclusion or the, the, this recommendation that we will recommend like OpenGL for the main view and raster for the UI. And you typically get that today by specifying that you have a QGL widget uh, in the central view, in the main view, in the main window, and then you use raster as the graphic system. Questions? No? Yeah? Oh, you need to wait for the microphone. Sorry. Another reason for using raster for the UI is that integrating with native styling engines 
uh, and mixing them with OpenGL is extremely hard because you typically need to render theming data into some sort of buffer, then upload that and then draw it. And because the theming engine is dynamic, you don't you can't actually cache the stuff from time to time because it's based on taking like an HDC handle or something like that. So that's also where raster. You can always share a, uh, like a a block of memory between different systems, but it's um, the OpenGL thing makes it hard. Yes. Is there any support or any, any plans for supporting parallel rendering with rasterization? I did an experimentation with that some time ago. Um, and the thing is that the multiple, the multiple threads will be still be sharing much of the same cache. So it's actually slower. For uh, if, you're doing, if you're doing perspective transformations and, and heavy gradients, then it's faster, and then it's almost like it scales with the number of cores. But uh, but for um, but for normal UI drawing, it slows it down, and you also need to synchronize and lock and wait and stuff. So it's um, nope. So that's the that's the graphic system topic. On to painting. Uh, Gunnar's rule number one is that the greater the distance between the draw calls, the worse the performance. Um, and what I mean with that is that with draw calls, I actually mean like the draw rect and the draw pix map. And I see that my QML presentation framework has not has failed to put the text on the screen. That's good. But minimize the state changes and the clip changes and the transform changes while you're painting, because anything you do uh, to change those things will cause some sort of subtle change in the internal structure of things and will cause a hiccup. And perhaps a little bit more importantly, do not do other stuff while painting. Like when you're drawing, you should only be drawing. You shouldn't be parsing documents and you shouldn't be doing, you do, shouldn't be, you shouldn't be reading sockets and you shouldn't be other stuff. Like, and I know this sounds obvious, but I mean, this also applies to what happens beneath QPainter, because when you say QPainter draw text, what actually happens is that that text needs to be converted into, if you have like HTML in there, this will have to be converted into, into it needs to be converted to glyphs, it needs to be calculated offsets and layouts and all sorts of nasty stuff, which is not painting. So you're actually not painting while doing that stuff, only at the very end, when you're done with all that stuff, do you get to the painting part which is why text is slow, by the way. And also with, if you're drawing text, pix map, text, pix map, text, pix map, then in terms of GL, that implies changing the pipeline back and forth, back and forth. So even though it looks like you're calling draw, 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 you're actually changing pipeline, draw, changing pipeline, draw. So that's also slow. So, the second uh, Gunnar's rule number two is that the fewer the draw calls, the better the performance. And if you put these two rules together, you end up with the fact that if you, if you don't do anything, it's really, really fast. <laughs> anyway, um, the point is really that um, if stuff's not going to be shown on screen, you shouldn't be drawing it. If I have a rectangle clip that is here, and I have like a boat there, I shouldn't be drawing the boat because it's outside the clip. And you may argue that Qt should actually check for that and do a bounding box check on every primitive, but do you really want that? I don't think you do. Because if we did, if we had to take a look at every single polygon, every single line, and match that against the current bounding box of the clip, we would actually be wasting a lot of time for most of the use cases that actually try to draw stuff that is actually going to be shown. So we, we don't, we don't, we decided on not doing that a long time ago, and we're sticking to that. So if it's if it's not going to show on screen, you shouldn't be drawing it. This is different with OpenGL because in OpenGL you can typically schedule like at least a couple of hundred thousand triangles that are not going to be shown and it's still pretty okay. QPainter, not so much. And uh, whenever possible, 
do multiple things with one call. It's better to do fill rect, fill rect, fill rect than to do set brush, fill, uh, set brush, draw rect, set brush, draw rect, set brush, draw rect. And both the Raster Paint engine and the GL engine have a customized path for fill rect that doesn't toggle, the, that doesn't deal with the internal state. So, and same with draw lines. If you can draw five lines with one draw lines call, that's better than calling draw lines five times in a row. Same with draw rects. And if it's really complex, it makes sense to catch it in the PIX map, like SVGs, for instance. So at that point, I get to my example. I have my cheat thing there. So my idea here was to, was to just illustrate a little bit on how these how these rules actually work in real life. And I wrote this very convenient virtual keyboard for some strange language. Um, what happens is that in this case, I'm using Q widgets. And uh, each of those button is a widget. It's a very dumb button because you cannot click it. Uh, it just has a paint event that uh, opens a painter, says um, calls draw pix map and draw text. And there are like 26 by 26 of those. And the point here is really that behind the scenes, I should be drawing, as I said before. But the fact is that between each of those paint events, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, the widget tree is rendered hierarchically, so back to front, um, top down, if you like. And for, for any prior to calling the paint event, Qt will have to set up a bounding box clip so that when, we, when you draw something that you don't draw outside the widget, right? It also needs to make sure that there is a secret uh, transformation that puts, if the widget is, like the window surface is yay big, the widget is down here. So zero, zero for the QPainter logical coordinate system needs to be translated from top left down to here. So there is some stuff happening behind the scenes. So I'm not drawing and drawing and drawing. I'm actually setting a lot of state and then drawing. And the time this takes is 80 to, a little over 80 milliseconds per frame, which is not that impressive. If I change to graphic system, Raster for this. Whoa, it's a lot better than I got before. That is strange. I used to get 70 milliseconds for Raster. Okay, I can live with that. Maybe, oh, the screen is probably smaller. That's probably why, so the thing was smaller. Shouldn't affect the stuff that much. But the deal, um, the point is that this setting up the state, uh, setting up this hidden system clip and, uh, and initializing the painter and all that stuff is cheaper on raster. So that's why raster is much, much faster in this, in this thing. If I were to implement the same thing using graphics widgets, then um, what I'm doing is that I have a graphics scene, I populate it with, with exactly the same painting code uh, and populate the scene with items that have like draw pix map and then draw text. And I know that these, the graphics view, it doesn't have the same contract uh, with, with the bounding box clip. If I draw outside my graphics item, I get a painting error or I get, I get clutter on screen. Um, so I'm allowed to do that but, uh, but it also means that it's actually a little bit cheaper, and I expect that this will be now a little bit faster. And I need to pass minus no OpenGL, otherwise I will screw up. And it is a little bit faster, because now I'm doing a little bit less between my painting. Yes. Oh, you need to wait for microphone, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to ask if the example is available online. No. Okay. It's not. <laughs> but it's not much more words. Um, I'm just wondering if this is just 
one graphics view and one graphics scene with a lot of pix map on, pix, um, pix maps on it. It's one graphics view with one graphics scene with uh, 26 times 26 graphics items that each draw a pix map and a text. I can show you the code. Thanks. Um, let me see virtual keyboard, button widget. There we go. This is creator. <laughs> Actually, it did make it bigger. Let me get smaller again this morning because I needed to code something. <laughs> so here we go. It's the button. Oh, this is the wrong one. Uh, widget based, proxy based, graphics based. It's probably this one. Button item. Here we go. This is the item. It has a paint function, it draws a pix map, and it draws the text. Okay? Does that answer the question? Yeah. Perfect. I'm not done with the example yet. So, I need to get back to my sheet. Sheet. So, uh, if I enable OpenGL, for this thing, it's actually slower now. That should have been faster. Screen size makes a difference. So I mean, maybe not that, not that strange either, because what happens is that OpenGL in this case will be drawing a lot of small rectangles, and they're simply too small to make proper use of GL, uh, to, to make use of that hunk of parallelized hardware that sits there. But if I say here, item cache, and I tell, how many of you were, you were at Alexei's presentation yesterday about graphics view in depth? So you know, about, you know all about the item caching modes and the indexing flags and all that stuff. I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to illustrate that by simplifying this to drawing just pix maps, I won't be having any hiccups in the pipeline. I won't be having any. I'm just drawing pix maps. And there's very, very little setup cost in between. And in this case, it goes straight to 16 uh, milliseconds per frame. And I'm at 60 FPS. So that's, that's how it works. But I think that I mean, caching is cheating. In this case, I think like, this should be doable without. And so caching is really cheating. And it uses far too much memory, and it has all sorts of consequences that, I mean, whenever you change, if you have a GL view and you change the cache, you need to render the stuff, and then you need to upload this to texture memory, and that needs to be twiddled bits and all sorts of stuff. So like, working with caches on the GL paint engine for graphics view is potentially dangerous. So I would like to avoid that. So I know that graphics view behind the scenes, even though it's, it's simpler than what we're doing with, uh, with the widgets, it's still doing a lot of stuff. It's, even if I set all the, all, the, all the hints, like I disable indexing, so that's not happening. I can disable, I can disable the save and restore painter state. I can disable the uh, something anti-aliasing, shifting pixel stuff. Don't don't adjust for anti-aliasing is one. There are a lot of these things I can set, and even with all those, I know that graphics you will anyway always set a transform on the painter prior to get, getting to me. So like even if I set all the flags, there's still stuff happening between my painting calls. So what I can do then is that I can, instead of doing that, or using items, if I implement all of these things as one single item, and I just specify the X and the Y offset myself, then at least I get away from that and I'm just drawing. And if I do that, I save another Four milliseconds, I was at 52 before, wasn't I? 52, 53. So now I'm at 50, uh, 48 ish. So that's another few milliseconds that I gain by not going through setting transforms between each of those. But um, the people that were at my talk yesterday, what is the problem here now? Text is a problem, that is correct. Um, State changes. 
So what happens, now this is based on OpenGL, there is one item in the scene and it draws all of the things, but it draws them item by item. So it draws background text, background text, switching state, switching pipeline. So if I, if I change this to be ordered, I am down to 26. So that's almost twice as fast by not changing the rendering uh, state. This is based on OpenGL, correct. Then it makes almost no difference. It makes a little difference because there's still some, 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 some updating that needs to happen with these spam function pointer thingies, but it's, but it's significantly less. Yes, uh, I forgot about the microphone. The question was how do you enable OpenGL? The way that you enable OpenGL on um, graphics view is that you, if I search for QGL widget, this is the line that enables OpenGL. To use OpenGL in graphics view, you need to construct a QGL widget and set that as the viewport of the graphics view. And it's the same as well if you want to use uh, OpenGL in your own applications, you just change the base class of your view or renderer class to be QGL widget rather than QWidget. And if you want to have anti-aliasing, then you need to pass a format specifier to that flag, to that class. Does that answer the question? Okay. And I hope I explained the reasons why. So the, the so the, the the question was, even though this was used, it was still slow, and I I hope that at least then you were then you were hitting some of the bad paths with the state changes and the stuff like that, which is slowing you down, or caching and texture uploading and stuff. If you have if you have performance problems, um, I mean the best place to start is a profiler and and see which things are slowing you down, and it's it's usually it's usually possible to discern at least some location where st stuff is happening or st going wrong. But I will go back to my, where is the stuff? There it is. Yes, that was the ordering, 26 milliseconds I'm down to now. And I, I, I completely admit that this, 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 exam this particular example is a little bit artificial, but, but I, I do so to prove a point a little bit artificial. Um, I also talked about that we can, uh, if you can schedule a lot of stuff with one uh, function call, then that's good. And especially for GL, that makes a big difference. Um, so in 4.7, uh, we introduced this, uh, this, this functionality to Qpainter that we call the Particle Effects API. And um, you have a, we have this struct um, called the QPixMap fragment, which has an X and a Y scale and rotation and opacity and a width and a height, and it can, and it can source from a subpart of a PixMap. And then you have the function draw PixMap fragments, uh, plural, that takes a pointer to an array of these PixMap fragments. It takes, a it takes the QPixMap and it takes a fragment count. And what you can do with that is that if you, if you have, if you're drawing a, a theme of some sort, you can have the entire theming data in one pix map. And you could potentially, if the code is structured to support it, of course, you could potentially set up a, a pix map fragment for every theming element in your entire UI, do one draw call, and have the whole thing rendered in one draw call in GL. And that is very fast. So, um, I'm going to try that. I call that cheating. And this gives me another three milliseconds, 2.3 or 20, 23, I mean. And just to just to indicate that this is actually not not just bullshit, I added the option C sick, where it, in which case I will I will have a sinus uh, function over the over over a time, and then I'll just multiply 
put some, put some random values into scale and rotation and stuff. That looks like that. And I mean, and, and doing this comes for free with this API. There is absolutely no cost in doing that on GL. Huh? No, not the letters. It's a Pixmap API, right? I'm, I'm only changing the Pixmap, not the text. Okay. So I'm um, I am now at the um, I'm I'm at 23 um, milliseconds, and we know what's bothering us at this point. It's the text. And um, so a little bit about text glyphs and layouting them. Um, when I started in Trolltech, um, um, the Oslo office were like 10 developers or so, uh, and only one or two of them were, uh, were nati native English speakers. And, and the people that were doing text were certainly not English native speakers native English speakers. So they came up with this concept of they, they were laying out text. Um, and the process of laying out text is of course layouting. And uh, so like spread through the entire uh, Qt source tree, uh, you will find the word layouting. And uh, when like a uh, former colleague of mine, Trenton, saw that he would always like, oh, they're using layouting, it's laid out. But anyway, so that's the problem. The main problem is that draw text will, for every single time it's called, it needs to convert that, that Unicode string into glyphs with advances and take, uh, take, uh, take into account things like bearings and, and italics and all sorts of stuff. And it does that again and again and again and again. And Eskil wrote a blog called Insanity is, is shaping the same text again and again and expecting a different result. And of course, there is no different result. So we could, we could potentially cache this somehow, but there, there is no handle. Of a, like, you can't really cache on a queue string. We could hash that and, and do some equality checks, but that would suddenly like, that would blow up for the, for the common case again or for the, for, the, for the dynamic case again. So we didn't like that. And for this exact reason, QML, caches text as a Pixmap because it's simply too expensive to just have text drawing in the UI, which is kind of sad. So there is a way to get around this. And um, yeah, uh, QText layout allows caching. And it uses a fair amount of memory to do so. And um, I don't think I dare to say how much actually. It's like 250 bytes per character or something <coughs> with an overhead of like 4K. <coughs> the way it's used uh, is also rather nasty. Um, to get a, a layout of just a multi-line text is you need to construct the layout, pass in the text and the current font, you call begin layout on the thing, and then for each line of text, you need to construct a text line, set the width of the line, uh, adjust the position of the line, then you need to end the layout, tell that like, this is all the text that I'm going to lay out, and then set caching enabled to true. We felt that this sucked. Introducing static text. This is new API in Qt 4.7, and uh, it tries to mimic the behavior of draw text, which means that it's a... Uh, yeah, it has the same behavior as draw text. There is very small memory overhead. I think we're down to 14 bytes per glyph, which is the absolute minimum we can have because we need the X and the Y, which is a floating point, and we need the glyph, which is a, which is a uint, and we need the original Unicode. So I, think, I don't think we can get, can get lower than that. And we're not publishing that number because we might have to add another byte at some point, but at least it's fairly low. And the way to use it is that during setup, you say my text item thingy is QStatic text, and you pass in the text string. And then during painting, you would say draw static text, pass in the position and the text. And it, it's really fundamental that like, you do the static text thing during setup, and then draw it again and again. 
But there's no benefit to constructing the static text just before drawing it and then discarding it afterwards. But I guess that's rather obvious. Um, it picks up the font and the transformation from the painter when it's drawn. So if, uh, so if the same item is drawn with similar transformation again and again, uh, it will be perfectly cached. If, it, uh, if one of those are changed, it will automatically relay out. But if, if you present, if for instance, if you have a label or something like that, then it will always be drawn with the same font and the same transformation, and it will always be cached. Yes, wait for microphone. Is the transformation, the global transformation from root to the item or is it the item's own trans transformation? Good question. I don't know. The second one I have. <laughs> <laughs> I can look it up. See if I can find it. I suspect it's the local one. I mean, because the offset is anyway added dynamically, so I, I don't think it really matters. Uh, let's see. Yeah, remove translation from matrix. Uh, I think that concludes that it's the it's the local. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah, of course it is. It is the local transformation without offset. So um, if we go back, we are cheating with the draw pixel fragments, uh, and we are at 23, 24 milliseconds per frame. And if I add here minus static text, we are down to 16.7, and we are not caching. Or we're caching the text layout, but we're not caching in Pixmaps, which is, which would be bad. There's a question. How is the GL? How is the GL engine drawing text? The GL engine is drawing text by drawing text into an alpha mask and then or an RGB mask depending on if it's using the clear type or not and then it's drawing a quad per uh, per glyph so does it cache all the glyphs in texture memory yes it has it has a big uh, it has a big lump and do you ha how do you handle that for like asian fonts for example the texture is bigger yeah extremely big but but it all needs to be available at some point anyway. So I and also how do you ha uh, then handle um, hinting? Uh, on Windows and on typically on Linux, the the font comes uh, pre-hinted to to the pixel grid, and you don't need to do anything about it because it's always at the same position. But on like Mac. Um, the glyph is rasterized at a different position depending on d depending on depending on yeah the the horizontal uh, offset, and that's the stuff that Eskil wrote a blog about just two three weeks ago that we added support for that in raster, and we're going to add support for that for GL as well. In which case we will have to have multiple caches per font. Yeah, I was thinking about font. Like scaling as well. That actually scaling the font can change how it's being uh, rendered. Uh, you can have different hints for different scales of that. Yes, for Windows, we always use what GDI gives us, so it's always perfect, uh, or we, it's as perfect as GDI gives us. On the GL Paint Engine, we typically scale uh, scale the the original glyphs for a very short uh, interval, like up to 1.5 away from the normal uh, like determinant of the matrix, and then after a certain point, we switch to path drawing, which is anyway super accurate which is also a little bit slow, unfortunately. But anyway, 
that brings us down to 16 milliseconds. Um, so, is this a useful addition to Qt? Yes. Anyone would use this? Thumbs up again? Great. How am I doing on time? Good? Okay. So, um, final thing, threading on graphics. So it's it's not so much about splitting the splitting the UI into multiple chunks and having all the cores render at once, but more uh, more so more just to see how how you can use threading to keep the UI responsive, and some of the features we're adding to to improve on this. And there are a lot of things that you typically want to do off the main thread, like if you if you have a map application, you would want to generate and render the to uh, render content of this map in another thread, so that the so that panning around in the map can be it can be fast and responsive. Rendering web pages is also something that it can easily be done in a different thread if you really if you need to. Image decoding should always be done on a different thread. So it's all about keeping the UI responsive. And um, the status as it is in Qt 4.7 today is that images can be decoded, scaled, and transformed in the thread. QPainter can draw to a QImage in the thread, and QPainter can draw to a QPix map in a thread if you're using graphic system raster, which will be default on all desktop platforms by 4.8, if we can get it in shape. There are some features for GL as well. Um, we can swap in a different thread, um, which can be handy so that, I mean, if you swap, uh, if, when you're, if you set swap interval to one, you're blocking, uh, and that typically prevents uh, Qt event timers and stuff from firing. It prevents the I.O. notifiers to, um, from firing and all sorts of stuff, which can be potentially bad. So if we can do all the rendering and all the, all the stuff in another thread uh, with GL, then that's, we think at least that it opens up a little bit of a problem or it closes a problem. Texture uploading. Uh, ideally, you would use like a pixel buffer object to do asynchronous texture uploads, but uh, not all devices uh, have that extension available. So we'll be able to do texture upload and the, and the driver side, CPU side twiddling of the bits to do that in uh, on a different thread uh, can be quite handy. Uh, we support raw GL into pixel buffers and Q QGL widgets in another thread, but you need to synchronize the resize and the paint event because the GUI thread will call those, and if you start resizing the surface while GL is rendering, typically bad things will start to happen. In 4.8, we're adding a few more features. Uh, you can use QPainter to a QGL widget from an arbitrary thread, and you can use a drawing into a QGL frame buffer object using QPainter from an arbitrary thread. Uh, and again, manual synchronization for a certain piece of the code is required. So just to, to just to show what I mean with keep the UI responsive, I have another small demo. What happens here is that I have, I can just start it up. Minus new thread in my pictures folder. So what's happening is that I have um, I have a lot of images in this folder. I iterate through uh, this um, this directory, and for each of the image, I load it, and then I scale it down, and then I draw it onto onto this uh, tile which has a gradient in the background, a line on the side. Um, it has a white frame around the, the the picture, and it has this uh, this nice like wavy drop shadow. And right now I'm doing this all on the GUI thread. So, um, and the main view is a GL widget. Um, and I guess that's, that's it. And it's really like doing this is fairly, fairly fast. If I start panning, like it, st it stops and blocks and the frame rate drops significantly. And like, it's really horrible in terms of uh, how it performs. So the way to fix that is to push all of that work that happens. Um, I can show you the code that is actually 
a little more interesting, threaded, there we go. This is it? Yeah, image reader, I read, uh, I get the size, I change the size, and I read out the image uh, downscaled. Um, that saves a bit of memory, by the way, instead of loading it full-blown into memory and scaling it down afterwards. Then I construct this tile thingy. Uh, I open a painter on the tile thingy, uh, draw a gradient, um, draw like the edge line. I draw the image rect, or I draw the image. Then I, what is this box path? Oh, yeah, that's the path. Um, Right, that's another thing. Instead of instead of drawing a white uh, a white um, square, I actually draw uh, a polygon that is just the outer thing to avoid drawing too much. So that's the path that comes there, and then uh, and then I have this uh, wavy drop shadow thing, which is some quads. I say fill path at the end, and then end, and then I send the tile to. Uh, back to whoever asked for it. So uh, by just by just starting another thread and uh, using queued connections, I can I can request uh, make requests to the to the worker thread, and it will emit a signal with the image back when it's done. So it's really like lazy, lazy, stupidly done, but it works uh, it works somewhat well. So if I do that, the result is something more like this. And like the, the the frame rate never drops below, or it's constant at 58 or 59. So like that's what I mean when I say that using threading can greatly help you um, to to have a, a UI that works really really fluid. So I think, yep, yeah, that's that's what I had. Sorry. That's a dual core. The question was if the machine is a dual core or a single core, and the answer is that it is a dual core. However, that same example runs on my N900, which is a single core. And on that machine, it's also super smooth. The problem is, 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 is not, the reason it works is because, uh, because you're, you don't need that much to do on, there's not that much to do on the GUI thread. Uh, you just need to, to schedule like, 20 or 30 draw image calls. And the scheduler will make sure that you get called often enough so that you, you're called several times per millisecond probably. So, so you have enough time, you have enough dedicated actual CPU time uh, even though you only have one CPU. So the scheduler solves that quite gracefully. But anyway, that's what I had. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and thank you very much for listening. Questions? We have time for that. There's one there. Why is text rendering on the Mac so much slower than on Linux? I'm not the right guy to ask that question. You would have to ask the Mac guys, like the Apple guys. That's bad. <laughs> but uh, it, it's a known fact or do we something wrong? It's, uh, I know that we typically end up, um, whenever we profile that, there's this one Mac function call, something Atsui CMAP for something, a uh, function that is always right up there at 40% or so. We have considered um, the option of at least plugging in and using Harfbus and simply not using any of the Mac text stuff because the Harfbus code we have in, we already use it on Windows and on Linux. And uh, so at least Qt integrates well with that. Uh, so maybe if we switch that, 
um, it would be better. But then again, then Mac text rendering would look different than 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 other text rendering on on the Mac, which would again be probably bad for for vis for the, the look and feel. Yeah, but that would be just um, I mean switchable thing. That would be exactly what we need. With Lighthouse, it could be. Because um, we need to update the text on like 20 times a second. And it's no problem on Linux. On a Mac, you get like eight times a second max. Yeah. We know about it. Um, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a simple thing to fix. Um, using the Harfa stuff, I don't know how much work that will be. Um, but yeah. Um, we're not actively pursuing that particular problem at the moment. Okay. We, we just we, we thought we thought about it yeah. and we were considering doing something, but it's, we're not actively doing anything in that area right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, your keyboard example: uh, if you change a few things and have an array of static texts and then randomly display the static texts, will the layout uh, also change every time? Randomly place them, like at different if positions? You, if you have uh, a grid of text, uh, your keyboard looks like a grid of text and uh, the text are values coming from the outside from some captured from the some device, the from some al uh, analog values, and you have, uh, let's say, 26 to 26, 26 by 26 analog inputs, and capture them with 60 FPS. So you're asking if you use the static text as a dynamic text, is it equally fast? Uh, yeah, if I have uh, if I have a bunch of let's the answer say, is no. 200 texts, the not more. The the answer is definitely no. The whole point of static text is that it is static. Okay. But I mean, if, if you're going to, if you, the cost of setting up a static text is the same as drawing a text, and then, like, the, the sum of static text construction plus drawing the static text is pretty much the exact same as drawing a text. So if you expect to draw that, that input twice, just for two frames, so if 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 they are if if you're updating the values if all of them are updating every single frame then there's absolutely no benefit. If you're updating them um if you're updating them every f like updating half of them every second frame then there is a benefit. If all the cells are equal I have 26 by 26 cells and they are all equal. They all uh, share a uh, share uh, an array of static texts which are let's say 200 if because i have 200 states of displayable texts and uh, the question is is it better to have it uh, cached as a alpha pix map or have a, is it better to have a static text i don't think i understand exactly what you're trying to do um, display 26 by 26 values of uh, 0 to of randomly 199, but with random occurrency. Or not random, but physical input. Right. Um, Something like a scope, like an oscilloscope. And, 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 you know, and, you know, and you know that you're only drawing numbers, for instance. What? And you know you're only drawing numbers. I'm only drawing numbers. Then if you have 10 static texts and you're just drawing them at different positions all the time, I think that would be insanely fast. Thank you. Okay. Then I got what you're asking for. Uh, you seem to have updated the virtual keyboard file a bit. Uh, will you publish it in some future blog? Yes, um, I think our marketing department has a plan for uh, for how both the presentation material and the examples will be published. But I think I think at least the, the idea is to wait until after the San Francisco event with publishing that. And if that doesn't happen, then I'll then I'll I'll just post it or put it on Gatorius sometime in in a few weeks. So yes, it will be available at some point. Okay, thank you. Okay. Oh, there was a question over there.
Hi. If you use um, a static text for drawing uh, two different in two different uh, sized rectangles, um, are they both cached, or will they cause problems? Or if you're using the same static text, uh, and then you draw it into two different rectangles. So if I want to say... If you draw it at two different positions, that shouldn't affect anything because the position is just added as an X and Y plus uh, at the very last stage. So that doesn't cost you anything. But if you want to lay it out to a rectangle and the rectangle changes, then the, stacks, the text is not static because then the layout changes. Okay, but it looked like the static, the Q static text only takes the text as the constructor, not the actual uh, bounding rectangle. But I think this one might take a bounding box. It has a set text width, which is, what you, which is the closest thing you'll get. And if you change the text width, then you're also forcing a relayout. Okay, thank you. There was a question there. Thank you. Um, Q widgets in the Q graphics view and scene. Yeah. What's the overhead? Or are there any better ways of putting putting widgets in Q graphics views? I can show you the version. Just this had an option that I didn't show uh, called proxy widgets. Close your eyes. <clears throat> This is not the code you're looking for. <laughs> Proxy widgets are especially bad on Mac. Um, and, and the option would be, or the alternative? QML. Ouch. Um, as, like implementing a straight Q graphics uh, item-based button is fairly simple. So, so for uh, so for many of the small controls, the, the the task of actually writing that is not that big. Uh, why is QML better in that sense? What's being done? It's not using Q widgets inside Graphics View. It's it's all implemented in terms of items, and it does a lot of shortcuts. Like it caches the text in a pix map because it's it's too slow, and it prevents you from using features that are explicitly that are typically slow. That's the, that's the main reason why QML is often tends to be slightly faster than than, than plain Q Painter code or plain Q Graphics View code. But I mean, there are some there are some use cases where, where proxy widgets are uh, work pretty well. If you remember the this uh, this uh, boxes demo that Kim did back in the days. Why do we have this stupid box? I mean, in this case, we're actually using uh, we're using a proxy widget, and we only have one, and the cost of doing just one is not that high, and it's cached with an item with a device coordinate cache, so it means that like we're rendering it only once, and then afterwards we draw the pix map, and that for this scenario that works pretty well because it's mostly it's mostly not changing and and it's only updating based on user input, which happens fairly infrequently, and it's anyway just one. So in this case, I mean, if you if you have a UI and you just want to put a little bit of UI uh, on top of Graphics View, then the proxy widget could work for you. But uh, but it doesn't work for for like having a using a Q push button inside a proxy widget and doing that a lot of places. If it's just one, then you're probably good. Yeah, question over there. I think we're running out of time too. I was just curious, you showed us the um, demo running with raster and with OpenGL. And since you mentioned you were going to phase out core graphics in favor of raster in 4.8, I wondered how fast it ran with core graphics at the moment. Uh, the very first one I ran, oh. the very first one I ran was with, was with uh, the widgets one was with, uh, was with um, uh, okay, sorry. Yes, um, and I didn't 
I failed to mention that graphics view on this particular thing, uh, the graphics system raster has, there's a bug, so it draws the background with raster and then GL on top. So it's actually a little bit slow, but that's, we're working on it, so it should be fixed by the time we switch. Okay. So that's the reason why I didn't use raster for the rest of the stuff. Okay, thanks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think we're done. I hope you had a good developer days.